So just, ooh, there we go. Yes, it this is gonna be an adventure, an adventure on its own. All the people are gonna come, cause it's time for, time for Bakery Line. Mr. and me. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. So happy to have you here. Uh, welcome to another edition of Bakery Live. Today's show is called using astrology for change a branch of discussion and esoteric knowledge we don't usually venture down but we have an expert here to help us i'm so happy to have dr hillary booker on the show today talking to us about uh how she uses astrology which is kind of a unique take and i'm really looking forward to hearing about it so let's as always i'm dave there's arnie and let's say hi to hillary hillary thank you so much for being here Thank you. We are going to get started in just one second. Just want to remind everybody who's watching, feel free to uh, chat us and we will see your comments. We'll get them on the show, ask questions of, of all of us and especially Hillary to find out uh, anything you want to know about astrology, something we're talking about. But really, I mean, the main, the main key today is understanding how we can use it in our personal lives, how we can actually use astrology to handle the individual crazy amounts of individual and collective change we're having to undergo right now. Now, Hillary and I have been talking for online for uh, a few years now. We did a podcast together on my old podcast, um, Creating Love and Profit, and uh, we, did a, uh, we did a show actually called How to Find Your Destiny. So it was, it was, it was, that was a really interesting discussion. We, we went into, you know, understanding how to unearth your creativity. And then I subsequently um, hired Hillary to do a, like a birth chart breakdown for me. And uh, I got this, this really interesting packet of information. And some of the stuff was, um, you know, it was like, huh, no, that's really actually sp spot on and something I need to look at. So, you know, I think that's, that's, that got me into the idea of astrology, just giving interesting clues, which is how I shared this, uh, how I shared this, the, the show on, on my email list. You know, I said, this is going to, we're going to look for the clues that can help us during this time. And, and every, every modality has a piece of the truth. So what's astrology's piece of the truth? So how do we, uh, let's, so why don't we just hear from you, Hillary, why don't you just give us a quick introduction and let us know you know what? Uh, a little bit of your of your story. What brought you to this this place? Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's so lovely to be here with you both today. Um, for me, I have a. I, I'm an interdisciplinarian. I am an academic and many other things. And so, what really brought me to astrology originally is I think it's in a lot of ways it's a classic both what brought me and what's kept me there is kind of the classic you know at first I wanted to save the world you know but then the more you try to save the world the more you realize that the only way that you can really save the world is by saving yourself um, and the only way that you can change the world is really by changing yourself that there's only one person that can change you and there's only one person that you can change and that really needs to be the focus. And then obviously the goal is to work on that with other people. And I think that really healthy, beautiful communities are places where, you know, collectives of people who are all seeking to change themselves together. And so I have, you know, this master's degree in international peace studies where I studied a lot about collective change and what is peace and what is war because you can't study peace without also studying war, um, studying conflict. You know, I uh, trained in and have done mediation. So there's a lot of, you know, working with people, trying to help people figure out how to get along, find common ground, all of that. And then I um, got a PhD in environmental studies and that, the work there has very much been about, again, the relationship between the bodies we're in and the bodies we're on, which is kind of the same as as above, so below. Um, 
And part of my work in that has, was in theoretical ecology. And so in theoretical ecology, you know, what's happening in a cell is the same thing that's happening in an organism. And what's happening in an organism is the same thing that's happening in an ecosystem. The processes are the same. They're just at different scales. And when I started to really realize that, I started thinking about, okay, well, if a lot of my personal work is about integration and the integration at the collective level, then that means that we also need to be integrated at the individual level. And so what I find to be really interesting about um, ecology is it's a form of integration. So again, some of, my, some of the theory that I'm embedded in is uh, post French post-structuralism and then what grew out of that, particularly in terms of um, decolonization movements from the kind of from the really the 30s through to the 70s um, and a lot of my work has been in the Caribbean and so a lot of the theories that I study are particularly Caribbean theories that also grew out of French post-structuralism because the people who were developing them were people from the Caribbean and people from Africa who studied in France um, and did their work in France and so a lot of the integration theories from the Caribbean, which are in my particular areas in creolization theory, are very much about, we can, we can say how we want it to look, but that doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, we need to focus on how do things really look and what does integration really look like? And the you know Caribbean cultures, and they all look very different, but one of the things that they have in common is this really intense level of all of these different pieces mixing together in, in, a, in a very unique way. And so in these theories, everyone just has to get along. And in these theories, and, and one of the particular theorists who I have been really focused on is Glissant. And, you know, he gets really specific about the fact that, you know, I can access part of everyone and I can access all of no one. And if I'm focused on trying to access all of anyone or all of everyone, then that's when we have problems, you know? So it's very much about agreeing to disagree. And one of the things I was saying to you before the show is one of the things that I've been recognizing that's happening in the US right now is there's a lot of uh, arguing and disagreement about agreeing and that seems like a little bit of a unproductive conversation. We don't have to agree. And so in these theories, we don't have to agree. You know, everyone just has to live next to each other. There's always going to be conflict. Um, but one of the things that astrology demonstrates is that we also all have energies within us that are conflicting. And so, Whatever is happening internally, whatever you see or feel internally is also something that you're going to see externally. What you can't see internally, you can't see externally. What you repress in yourself, you're repressing outside of you. Whatever you see that you don't like outside of you is something that you don't like in yourself. And so what a lot of people don't know is an astrological chart is actually a wheel. And every single person has every single sign and every single planet and both luminaries and all of the asteroids and all of the points within their charts. So one of the ways that I like to describe this to people is if you gave 10 chefs 10 ingredients, you would get 10 different um, recipes, right? You get 10 different dishes. So one person might boil their potatoes. One person might roast their potatoes. One person might fry their potatoes. And so those potatoes would taste different. And that's kind of like what it's like in a chart. Um, everyone has all the same ingredients, but they're mixed together differently and in different amounts, but everyone's got every single thing within them. And so astrology is in the way that I use it, a way of looking at your own sense of wholeness, or if you're working with another person, another person's sense of wholeness, being able to see very precisely and specifically, because it's a very, it's a very concrete system. And even though there's these incredibly mystical components to it, 
Um, and one of the things that I think we're going to talk about today is, you know, that it's an eclipse season and we're also in a Venus retrograde. And so there's these very mystical, synchronistic, you know, spiritual things that can happen. But at the end of the day, the system itself is extremely concrete. And so you can see very clearly what are the imbalances that you hold and how can and how can you bring balance back to those imbalances? What are the parts of yourself that you probably tend to emphasize or tend to really admire in yourself or things that you want to show the world? What are the parts of yourself that you hide? And how can you bring those parts that you hide out? And how can you kind of uh, turn down some of those energies that might be overly, um, you just might have too much of them. So another important component in my practice is again, when we talk about astrology as a wheel, right? So think about the spokes of a wheel and that the signs in a part are always have their complements in opposition of them. And so I tend to work less with signs. So, you know, people will be like, well, I'm this sign, like I'm this sign or that sign or whatever sign. Your sun sign is one piece of your chart. And for some people, it's not even the most important piece of their chart. And it's only a small piece of information given the complex, whole, immense, information that's held in a chart which is almost infinite i mean it really is infinite and so one sign is not one sign or um one little piece of information is only going to give you a tiny piece of yourself and so when you look at a chart and there are these spokes you can really do a lot to learn about how to balance your energies out because it's really about focusing in on how those energies show up in your life. So and another thing that a lot of people don't might not necessarily know if they haven't done a lot of work in astrology is that the signs, each sign represents a particular flavor of energy. Every, every planet and the luminaries represent a particular part of your psyche and a particular part of your soul. And the, the signs represent the flavor of those parts and how they're going to actually show up. So again, that's kind of the, is it gonna be boiled? Is it gonna be roasted? Is it gonna be fried? Um, and then the, the houses of a chart also demonstrate where in your life shows something shows up. So again, from somebody who is interested in kind of this connection between collective integration and personal integration and, and somebody who uses this for you know, helping people mediate their interpersonal relationships is, you know, if I see that somebody's like, well, you know, those Scorpios, X, Y, and Z, or those Aquarians, you know, whatever it happens to be, then you show them, well, you have that energy too. Let me show you where it shows up. And then they're kind of like, oh yeah, that's kind of true. That mm -hmm. does show up there. Um, but another way that, again, I like to think about this is, like I said, I'm trained as a mediator for protracted conflicts between people but how i work with an astrological chart with my coaching clients is to help them is to mediate themselves right so it's still a mediation but it's a mediation between all of the parts and the voices that they have inside of them so is, is that to say that you could replace that you could use astrology as a system but replace like the planets with i don't know names of fishes and uh, the different signs with colors and that it would give similar effect because you, you seem to say that it's a very concrete system and that basically why, or why did we choose to connect it with planets and and mythical creatures and yeah. you know? i think that's a really great question and i mean again one of the things that i'm really interested in is to me yes astrology traditional astrology is connected to these mythologic these these mythologies and these greek and roman mythologies but there's also but astrology actually exists um forms of astrology actually exist in almost every culture 
culture and almost every traditional culture. So um, again, you know, because I do a lot of archetypal work, so, you know, like a lot of things with Joseph Campbell and that, that sort of thing. So when I work with people, um, I, a lot of times will ask people, especially if we're going to be working over a, a time period, a, a significant time period, um, what is their spiritual or religious background? Because that allows me to connect the stories as they emerge traditionally through astrology to the stories that they are most familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, absolutely. And I, I mean, I have studied a lot of different, I mean, not only studied, but engaged in and continue to engage in a lot of different spiritual systems. And so for me, I'm always, you know, connecting these different energies and these different energetic systems um, it's not the only energetic system, but it's just one that, again, is very concrete and uh, rational, but also flexible enough for the mystery to unfold and for change to happen. And that the energies are living, right? These are not static energies. The energies are always changing. And this is one of the things that eclipse seasons really can bring about is that these energies are evolving as we're evolving. How we understand them is evolving. And part of our evolution, I believe, is to allow the energies to evolve, to allow for them not to always be the same. Hmm. So yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I do kind of, I'm always trading, trading stories in and out and, and changing the names of the things because I'm definitely, I'm not stuck on the name of the thing mm -hmm. as much as I am as people's understanding of the energy and how it manifests within themselves. Yeah. And can, can you, because you said twice that this, uh, this is a very concrete system. So could you elaborate on that and maybe give an example on how someone could use this system or how you use this system on some of your clients uh, on a concrete problem? Yeah, absolutely. So um, like I said, it, but in a chart, there are 12 houses, and each house represents a particular part of a person's life. So if somebody comes, I don't have too many people that necessarily are like, I need you to help me with this particular problem, because that's just not my practice, That's just, okay. and it's not what I tend to um, attract. But again, I work with people over time, so people will come you know, over a period of time, this is something that I'm upset about. This is something that I'm worried about. And so I'll go to the house of their chart where that thing is showing up, where that thing would show up, you know? So, I mean, obviously a lot of people come with like work or career related things or love, you know, romance, relationship kinds of things. So, um, for example, so actually, this is one of my this is one of my favorite things, and this is very concrete. In your chart, there are different houses that correspond with relationships, right? The energy that there's an energy that you bring to kind of the beginning of relationships, and like love and sex and dating and fun and play, like in, in the beginning of, of a relationship. And then if that relationship uh, then evolves into a committed partnership. That energy that you show up in a committed partnership shows up in a different house of your chart. And so you're going to bring a different kind of energy to a committed partnership mm. than you do into the beginning of a relationship. So that means that you are going to change. Who you are and who your partner is are going to change how you negotiate yourself and your relationship with the other person when you make that commitment yeah. and even though those are different energies in your chart, they are, um, they're complementary energies. So if you kind of connected with somebody and it worked early on, as long as they're okay with you changing, it's probably going to be okay. But there's another house of your chart that has to do with merging your resources merging with one another like moving in together and um having businesses together and, and it's not necessarily that, that place in your chart that doesn't only have to do with romantic and sexual partners that you merge your resources with they can be business partners etc but 
that part of your chart does is not is in conflict. Well, let me not say in conflict, but is challenges the other two houses. Mm -hmm. So you will become a another different person in those kinds of things. And if you're not aware of that, that's when conflicts can happen. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that astrology does again is it acknowledges that we don't show up to every person and every part of our life the same all the time. Mm -hmm. We have to, we, we all are going to in some way or the other. And again, to different extents, because some people have a lot of energy in one particular area of their chart. So that's going to have a really strong focus for them in, within themselves and probably externally. Some people don't. We all have, you know, where Jupiter is in your chart is going to be an area where you're, that's going to be tend to be a little bit easier. You're going to, you know, probably be a little luckier in that part of your life. Where Saturn is in your chart, you're going to struggle with that part of your life until you master it. And so seeing the chart and seeing that these different areas hold different energies, again, to me, what it's about more than anything else is an awareness of your own energy, you know, and it really allows you to focus on how you show up. So that again, and, and again, when you're in an interpersonal setting, if you know how you show up in a particular um, part of your life, then you know how and whether you need to change when you do. And this is another thing, you know, I see a lot of people saying, you know, using their astrological chart as an excuse. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I'm just that way because, you know, well, I'm a Virgo son, so that's just how I am. And my practice is... People that work with me know I, that is not an acceptable. That is not acceptable because to me, if you're coming to me, you want to change, and this is a system that where you first build awareness of what your natural propensities are, and then it allows you to move into a different kind of energy based on that awareness. And your chart also tells you how you you agreed to change in this lifetime too which is why all the work around de destiny is something that I'm really interested in because your destiny requires for you to become a very different person than you were when you came into this life. And again, we're in this eclipse season and eclipse seasons are times when uh, time and space tend to be folded, they're portals and they push us towards our destiny. And in particular, um, and, and less on like what we're supposed to be doing, but how we're meant to be and so eclipse seasons are really pushing us towards our energetic destinies just as much as our you know where you're supposed to be what you're supposed to be doing it's really if you are doing your work in a particular kind of way if you are being in a particular kind of way in the world then no matter what you do you're fulfilling your destiny mm -hmm. so this uh, is I, I love that and yeah, David, please go ahead. But I love what you just said regarding, you know, it's it's a system, you know, you're using that as a system. And so the same things are happening and someone with a religious background will put some words and concept on that. Someone with a scientific, purely scientific will put some other words. You who are kind of in the middle, you put some... You, and I, I really love that because it's all we are all witnessing this wonderful thing that we call life and trying to put some words and explanation and concept on, on that. So fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. David. Well, yeah. we have a, some feedback from an audience member as well. She appreciated. Uh, I know you guys can't see it, but I'll read it to you. Uh, Andy says uh, the cooking metaphors are helpful. So just uh, some feedback for you, Hillary. She appreciated. Andy appreciated the uh, the potato particular the potato metaphor <laughs> but but uh but i you know what you're making me think of is there there are so many personality profiles online especially used in the corporate world that are even a wheel you know they're even like they just show different dimensions of of personality and so you know i never thought of it like this before but one way to to think about you know the astrological wheel is just it's charting the different dimensions of your personality just like, Absolutely. just like a, you know, just like any personality profile. Just would, like a wheel, yeah, wheel of life. Yeah, yeah, like a wheel of life. You know, there's that wheel of life where you, you look at each dimension of your life and you, and you use, it's a coaching tool, you know, you can decide, well, how does this area of my life feel? How does, you know, how do I act in this area? How's this area of my life going? You can examine those parts of your life. And 
you know, and, and so astrology just basically throws in some other ingredients like the planets, the signs that gives you a suggestion for the first place for you to look at like what could be going on with you. And, and then if it resonates with you, if it strikes a chord with you, you know, then you know that it found something, you know, that was useful for you to look at. So I think it's, you know, from, from that perspective, it's not so dissimilar from, you know, any of the personality profiles that we, you know, that people love to love to go through, you know, but there is one big difference. I'll just say this. The one big difference is that it's super ancient system. You know, the the one big difference is, yeah, the one, the one big difference is like, is like, I, I like using the stars and the planets as a system because everybody on earth looks up and sees that same shit. You know, it's like, if you were going to come up with a, if you were going to try to come up with a system that would connect our human lives with the earth's life, like the earth's travel through the solar system. I mean, the earth passed through signs just like we do, you know? So if you, if you wanted to have a system that connected what we see in the cosmos with our actual human lives and how the earth moves and the sun moves. And you, if you really believe that's all connected in one thing, then astrology is trying to describe that relationship, you know, with its, with its system. So actually, I think that's one thing I really like about it. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely agree. I was going to say that the, a big difference. So I definitely think that astrology, and again, this is a huge piece of how I use it is an amazing tool for being able to understand your own personality. Some of the key differences between astrology as opposed to, you know, a lot of the personality tests and of course the new personality tests coming out all the time is that it's an ancient system. It's an, like I said, an ancient system that's practiced in many different cultures. So the, the system that most people probably um, watching this are most familiar with um, is, you know, the Western Hellenistic Greek system. But, you know, there's, a whole Vedic system, which in some ways is even more precise than the Greek system. Um, it has a, a, it's a different approach, but there's a lot of overlap still. Um, certainly astrology has been used a ton in African spiritual systems. Um, it's been used a lot in a lot of indigenous American spiritual systems. Maybe not exactly the same, you know, all the same wheel, but, but these are it's a way of connecting to what is greater than we are. And it's a system that's been developed over thousands of years. And, you know, not one person's idea of, well, if you have these, this and this, then you are this particular mm. uh, being reduced to one particular type. And again, one of the thing, what, why I think astrology is superior to some of those other things, not that they are, don't have value in youth is that again, you know, if you are being reduced to, and you're, if you're re- being reduced to one myers break personality type, then that automatically kind of um, focuses on those areas rather than saying, but you also have all of these other parts within you. You're actually all of the type somewhere at some time. And I think that as soon as we're reducing our own personalities, we're detracting from the possibility that we could change again yeah. right for me it's about change but then we're it's just like well this is who you are this is how you're born and this is who you're meant to be and uh these three people say that this is you know who you are as opposed to a system that's evolved you know i i don't think the myers Briggs personality types are evolving all the time and they're not in relationship with each other and so the other thing that's beautiful about astrology is that what's happening in your chart is always in relationship to what's happening collectively. And these points are always moving. There's nothing static, you know, so any moment will pass. The best moment will pass. The worst moment will pass. Any moment will pass. You are always changing. Your relationship with everything is always changing. So it's a dynamic system. Like I was saying before, it's a living system. It's a dynamic system. So it's much more aligned with, the reality is that we are animals living in ecosystems, right? So it really, to me, it really honors that, which again, connects to the theoretical ecology and the social ecology and sort of the environmental component that's really important to me as well. 
I think you, you touched on something very, I mean, you mentioned something very important later is that even in this fluid and very flexible system that you just described, sometimes you have people, your clients coming to you and be like, well, I'm this way, this way, so I cannot change, right? And yeah. this is this is the gross mindset versus fixed mindset just applied to something else. And yeah. I think I think it's it always comes down to to the people because you could have the inverse. You could have someone who has this growth mindset, who sees this uh, other kind of personality test and, and who are like, OK, I'm kind of like this, but fuck it. I'm, go I'm going to be who I want to be, you know, and, and grow all of that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's it's definitely useful to have like a, a system which was proven by time, as, as astrology seems to be, because I'm I'm very happy because I'm discovering a lot of things. So thank you for sharing. For me, astrology was horoscope, you know, until the beginning of this of this uh, uh, show. So I'm getting a lot of value here. Thank you. And um, and uh, yeah, it seems to be a great system that that you you manage to connect with really all the areas of of study and uh, that you that you've went through, right? Since the the ecology, the French uh, post something something that I don't know what it is, and I would like you to explain. So it's like everything you've done so far, kind of converged into you using astrology with your clients. Yeah, and I think, again, as as a person who is inherently interdisciplinary, you know, it's kind of like I never kind of fit into anything because I fit into everything a little bit. And what I like about astrology is everything can fit into it, right? It is expansive enough that everything can fit into it. So again, like every part of myself can fit into it. And so as somebody who is always seeking to explore all of these different parts of myself, you know, I studied astrology for a long time, only studying my own chart before I even attempted to look at somebody else's chart or try to do a reading. Um, and what got me interested in using it as a tool to help other people is that I really saw how I was able to connect to all of these different parts and understand how they all fit together because the system was expansive enough to hold all of those parts, right. even if they were, even if I perceived of them as being in competition with each other, because society always is going to tell us, well, American society, especially, especially again, this reductionism, you know, um, not just American society, but that's where I am right now. Um, but there is this reductionism, right? If you're this, you can't be this. Yes. You, you can be this, but if you want to be this, then you can't be this. And in astrology, you are all of those things, whether you explore them or not. So it's almost, it's a very different way of, of looking at yourself. It's not, if you're going to be this, you're going to be this. It's you are always these things. Are you going to explore this part of yourself? Are you going to allow yourself to touch on this energy, to manifest this energy, to explore this energy within yourself? Or are you just going to keep it hidden inside of yourself? So it's, it almost forces you to expand um, and, and not so much in, again, terms of like a growth mindset, but to it, it forces you to become whole. I think yeah. that I think that, I that, that sorry, Hona, go ahead. No, no, please, please go ahead. I was just going to say that I think th that you use that word wholeness r early on. And I think that that's r one of the keys here. I, I want to move on. We need to move on to talk about the, the current season we're in, you know, so people can use that. But I think that this idea of this idea that astrology is about exploring your wholeness, you know, is, is, is a very valuable piece of, of the puzzle. Because when Arno and I talk to people about emotional integration you know, that's kind of, it's a similar idea. You know, what's happening when people get triggered in life is they are, they're, you know, they, they encounter something that they don't think fits with them because they've either rejected it or they are repressing it or they, you know, they decide they don't like it, you know, and it, but everything they're seeing is a part of themselves. So, you know, the, this process of integrating your emotions is really a process of bringing your love to those parts of yourself that you've rejected or parts of yourself that have felt rejected. And it sounds like astrology is a tool for doing something similar. You get, it's a, it's a map, it, you know, gives you a wheel. That's a map that shows you all, all the parts of yourself 
And, you know, how are you going to relate to those different parts, you know, and, and maybe with the planets and the signs, it gives you some clues as to how you might default way, in a default way, relate to those parts. And you can decide if that's, if that resonates with you or not. But I, f- I feel like from that perspective, again, the, the idea of getting to wholeness, I mean, that's really what we're trying to do as individuals and we're trying to do as a society right now. I mean, you can see right now these fractures in society as we're realizing the, the, parts of ourselves that are repressed, you know, and they're manifesting okay. in, in people being repressed and, and those part, right. spots not wanting to be repressed anymore. And, and it seems like there's big conflicts, but actually they are two parts of us, you know, these are, these are this, the conflict is internal, you know, it's, and so how do we recognize, yeah. the, reconcile the conflict inside? Yeah. So astrology helps us do that. It sounds like, so let's, let's talk about these, you know, the moons. Cause we just had a, we just had the, the oh yeah i think um just when you're talking about integration and, and triggering right so one of it's such a helpful system for me when somebody comes to me and they're triggered and a lot of people come to me when they're triggered um whether it's friends or or clients um i can immediately go to their chart and and know and feel in my own body how they're feeling and to be able to look at it and be able to ask the right questions and be able to um, see where it's coming from. And if they're in a place, I can then say, well, this is how it shows up in your chart. So then it kind of uh, disarms it. It dismantles the uh, emotional component to it. Um, and when when someone's triggered, there's like it kind of takes them out of that space and so that's for again a lot of people um and i'm sure many of your listeners um i know for me and i you know what we shared with one another a lot of the journey is about getting out of the mind and kind of into the body and into the heart but when you're triggered it's you know trauma in your body trauma in your heart um and you heal trauma by pulling yourself out of it Mm-hmm. Um, by creating a different kind of pathway. And so it kind of, I mean, if you guys are familiar with EMDR, you know, it's this idea of um, eye movement, resonance, something I forget what exactly, but essentially, you know, somebody looking at, like they're moving their eyes back oh, and yeah. forth, or there's, you know, they have headphones on and something in their, um, like a sound is going back and forth in their head and they're telling a traumatic story and the way that it works is essentially because trauma is a groove in your brain, right? It is a neural pathway that just keeps happening over and over and over again. And as long as you let it keep happening like that, then it's going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. And so that works to um, essentially rewire your brain because it like knocks it out Mm. of its regular neural pathway. Astrology is another system. Again, it depends on the, obviously the extent of the trauma but it's another thing when people are feeling triggered to kind of pull them out um like something over here you know as opposed to going deeper into it which is not what you need to go deeper into the groove you need to like go over here so it's a very different way of also working with and understanding trauma as it really is um more up here so Hmm. okay all right. So yeah, let's talk about the equation. Yeah, or no, do you have any final questions uh, you know, under, understanding the approach before we move into understanding what's happening right now with this uh these eclipses we're experiencing and how we can use them? Well, uh I just want to be sure that uh Hillary will have a bit of time to share some way like people can use that in their life, you know, like maybe some really simple way that they can look at their well, first of all, where can where can they get more resources? So obviously your website is is uh, written on, on the screen. But if there's something like an easy first step that someone who would like to use astrology uh, for his own for the improvement of his own or her own life can do it. So if just that if you can share that during the episode, not necessarily now. And then I'm really curious about the eclipses and the moon because I had some crazy stuff happening to me last weekend, and so I want to know why. <laughs> but yeah, that's just just one I wanted to share. Great. So Hillary, well, let's 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 go with it. You can uh, 
what happened this past weekend. We had a we had a, a full moon on Friday, and um, and uh, I think you said it was a full moon in Sagittarius. You know, um, I, I I like Sagittarius. It's like he's the it's like an explorer sign, right? It's like a very creative kind of like, uh, you know, uh, is, I I just like the story of the centaur with a bow who's like creative and exploring. I like that. Uh, so we had a moon in that area. I also had a, a pretty weird weekend. Um, it felt like the, the the full moon hits me kind of hard. I, I'm more sensitive to it these days. But what what's your take on it? You know, astrologically, because we're still hitting the, we're still in that energy for at least a couple of days, right? Yeah, definitely. I want to start out by just saying really quickly that um, eclipses are eclipses occur when the north node or south node of the moon, which are two imaginary points connected to the ecliptic, which is an imaginary path by which it appears the sun is moving around the earth. And obviously we know that that's not how it really is, but astrology is an ecocentric system. So everything is puts the earth at the center and everything is moving around us. So, um, but those, those points in your chart represent your energetic destiny, right? And so that's why these, these times, these seasons are connected to your destiny, your energetic destiny. They can be people, you know, say sometimes there's faded events and it's very likely that even though you won't necessarily have um, really significant event, really significant events happen during every eclipse season, it's likely that many of the significant events that happen in your life will be somehow connected to an eclipse. Okay really quickly um what happened what's happening right now is the sun is in gemini and gemini is um, a sign of multiplicity of diversity of moving around really quickly so you think of like paul i always think gemini is pollinator energy it is ruled by mercury um who is the messenger so it's a sign of communication and it's a very quick moving sign it's the sign that rules the mind the lower mind and um, that's where the sun is during a full moon, the moon and the sun are in opposition to each other. So there's a tension. So that's often why we, you know, there's all of this energy because there's a tension between opposites during any full moon, um, an eclipse, a, a full moon that also has an eclipse attached to it, um, is a lunar eclipse. That means that it's intensified. So that sense of the energy is intensified the energy of that particular sign and also whatever happens to be ha uh, going on around it. So again, no, no lunation is an isolated event. The energy are, is not isolated. Um, how this Sagittarius full moon feels is very different than what last year's Sagittarius full moon felt and what next year's Sagittarius full moon, how that will feel. And so during this particular time, and again, we're in Venus retrograde as well. So, Retrogrades are not times to be feared, counter to what pop culture has taught us. They are simply times when the energy represented by that planet is inverted. So we experience it internally and sometimes have a harder time um, expressing it externally, but it's also a review of that energy and how that energy manifests within ourselves as well as how it manifests in the culture. So um, I think that's a really important piece of this because a Venus retrograde is a time when values are um, being reviewed and questioned. Um, and certainly that's something that's happening right now. And Sagittarius is also a sign of values and beliefs. Um, Venus is, uh, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is considered the, the great benefic. Um, and Venus is also considered benefic. These are considered to be like the two best planets or like the two lucky planets. I don't necessarily subscribe to that system um, because I think every planet has something to offer. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have these two, these two energies that have some similar kinds of over, overlapping flavors, for lack of a better word. So... Um, Again, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, so everything expands. So it's kind of like putting everything under a microscope. So anything that 
might have been just like a regular small issue all of a sudden becomes the biggest issue in the world. Um, and Sagittarius is also the sign of, yes, expansion, like you said. Um, it's a very competitive sign. It's a sign that likes to play, but it's a very competitive sign. And it's also the sign of higher education, higher learning, publishing. It's, you know, the professor, the Sagittarius is the professor. Um, and I think the biggest thing to get back to what we've been talking about is it's the sign that rules the unified theory, right? That every, there, there, is a, there is a right way of doing something, right? There's a right way and there's a wrong way. There's a, you know, it's a, it can be a very dualistic kind of energy. Um, so it's opposing sign, and this is again how we can look at the, the axis as a whole. Gemini is a, the twins, right? That's a sign of duality. So it's, you know, the, the two sides of, of the coin. Um, and so there's there's like a little bit of a bipolarism about about Gemini energy. So it's, it's a duality, a dualistic sign. Um, and in Gemini, those energies show up um, because Gemini, it's kind of your regular everyday life. Gemini is also the sign of how you learn, how you experience the world. Um, so again, kind of like your elementary education, whereas Sagittarius represents your, um, like your, your higher education, what you really believe in the world. And so the relationship is how you take the world in, how you understand the world on a, on your, on an everyday mundane level is going to somehow affect, there's going to be a, a you know, a, a relationship between those things. You know, what you, the theories that you experience will affect your everyday life and your everyday life will also affect how you see the world. And so that's an important part of what's been happening in the world and an important part of these eclipses. So in a lunar eclipse, an energy is cut off. Um, and so there's a sort of loss of a particular kind of energy. And in any eclipse, there's something becomes hidden, something that you would normally see very clearly is cut off, eclipsed so that you can see something that you wouldn't normally see. And so it's an opportunity to explore a particular part of yourself. And again, where the generally collectively, it has to do with beliefs and uh, publishing. You can also think this axis also has to do with the media, um, communication, how we communicate, who's legitimate, who's not legitimate, which media is legitimate. Um, your networks, how you um, move through your networks, to whom you're connected, all of those different things um, are part of this particular eclipse that happened this last weekend. So it's very much about, um, again, this relationship between cutting off the idea that there's one kind of right way um, or cutting off that there is a legitimate source. And we kind of see that happening here in the U.S. now where there's like, there's kind of no rules right now. And, you know, no one's really sure what's happening with the pandemic. And like people, some people are kind of on lockdown. <laughs> there's just, you know, like this sort of no one knows what to believe. I mean, actually, so more like no one knows what to believe or who to believe. So there's this cutoff of like Sagittarian energy is very much, um, like I said, there's an expertise. Um, there's no experts right now, right? <laughs> there's no experts. There's no, no one to kind of call and say, this person knows what's going on. We can rely on them. You know, it's, there's no, like, let's call up the elders. Let's, you know, ask the scientific expert what is the best. Like, there's just no kind of, we've lost that. And so that's a, that's a very lunar eclipse in Sagittarius kind of energy. Um, so this is a whole season. Normally eclipses come in pairs. This season we're lucky enough to have three. And so what we have is a lunar eclipse, which is a cutting off. Then we have a solar eclipse, which is an opening up. And then we have another lunar eclipse, which is a cutting off. So there's kind of this uh, bell curve kind of sensibility about it. But when you look at it in a chart, the two Lunar eclipses are actually in signs that are adjacent to each other. And 
the solar eclipse is opposite. So Sagittari the, the lunar eclipses are in Sagittarius and Capricorn, which are both very masculine signs. Sagittarius is again about, you know, higher education, higher learning, you know, these works that are published, legitimate, you know, this is the official literature, this is the official statement, this is the external, you know, the ex the expert, the state sanctioned expert. And Capricorn is where the other lunar eclipse is happening. And Capricorn represents the state, right? So you have the the knowledge that's that state sanctioned being cut off and the state being cut off, right? So Capricorn represents the patriarchy, but also just structures that we use to dictate our lives. It, it rules the the skeleton, you know, the teeth and the bones. Um, it's structures. And so actually I was thinking about post-structuralism. This is actually this time following this season is going to be a post-structural time. So there is a collapse. I mean, we are moving into a collapse of structures, which doesn't have to be a negative thing at all. Um, and especially, I, I don't think it has to be negative because the, the solar eclipse, and again, a solar eclipse always happens during a new moon. And it's an emphasis of a new moon. And new moons are always beginnings. They're times to plant your seeds. They're new beginnings. They're times of birth and rebirth. And cancer especially is a sign that represents maternal energy. It's the sign that um, ushers in the summer. It is about nourishment and nurturing. And it's, you know, rules and ruled by the ocean. It, it's ruled by the moon, right? And so it's a very emotional sign, but it also is a very um, intuitive sign. It's one of the most intuitive signs, but it's also a very emotional sign. So one of the other ways that I've kind of, one of the, visions that's kind of been coming to me is you know cancerian energy is again very nourishing nurturing lunar oceanic energy uh can be can be nurturing and nourishing uh it's also a highly protective sign so cancer's opposite is capricorn and so cancer kind of represents the mother and Cap uh, capricorn kind of represents the father and they're both very protective, just in very different ways. So again, kind of like Gemini and um, Sagittarius have these similarities in terms of information and types of information and Capricorn and Cancer also are different ways of, of protecting and understanding and moving and structuring. Um, I think Capricorn is a structure and, and Cancer is a system. So people might not always be able to see how the thing looks, but it's still there's still some level of structure to it. Um, okay, but okay, things... Hillary, I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump in for a second because yeah. so much information, uh, so much information. We have to. My instinct is to try to boil it down to okay. like some really key takeaways people can use. So what okay. I'm hearing is, uh, first of all, that the the I need to plug my my Mac. Sorry, that's okay. See you in a minute. That uh, <laughs> so the theory is that I mean the the recent eclipse that happened is a putting a microscope on our values and beliefs and our understanding of right and wrong, and then the eclipse and right. and it's revealing something that was hidden in that realm. And the eclipse coming at the end of the eclipse season, the other lunar eclipse, which is a month from now is uh is going to be a revealing of something in, in the state around the state and and structures and patriarchal oh, patriarchal indeed. structures okay in the, in the, the official structures in the official so again, structures yeah uh, um so the official structures and also that following those there's a release so that's the other thing that um a lunar eclipse is a revelation and a culmination because all full moons are culminations um, and that is followed by a release. Okay, cool. And the release makes room for, makes, creates space for a rebirth. And so, you know, this revelation of this last moon and this culmination of this last moon is now going to release a lot to create space. And, and so this is really the time, this purging period um, that, I mean, I've definitely been talking about and so we're moving into a solar eclipse, which is kind of that, you know, we have to purge everything in order to fit through that portal. You know, it's kind of like I think about cancer is, again, the sign of 
mothers and like birthing. So there's kind of like, if you want to fit through that hole, you're going to have to let go of everything or cancer also represents hurricanes. Right. And so it's, you got to figure out how to stay in the eye of the hurricane. Um, okay. And then, so, so let's, and then that hurricane could also come over. Hurricanes can also destroy structures. And so this is kind of how I'm understanding the whole of the season is that there's a chain understanding that creates, a, you know, a different kind of air mass, a, a different type of circulation that can create a hurricane. And then the hurricane can destroy the structures. And it doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to feel destructive. Um, but there could definitely be, a, there will definitely be a shift in society and it does shift in structures. Yeah. And so maybe as Anne uh, and Annette, we have a comment from Annette and she's saying, so maybe it's a good time during the solar eclipse for new nourishing structures to start emerging. It's, it's the time for planting the seeds of more nourishing systems. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Great. So we're seeing and, it. And on a personal, yeah. So on a personal level, um, it's a time right now is a time to review. What do you really believe? Um, what do you really believe in? Who do you really believe? Um, who are you really connected to? Because cancer is also the sign of home and kind of your local, like your family, home, roots, ancestry. So it's also a time, one of the ways that I've really been understanding is it's going to be a time where we're going to be coming more insular. Cancer is the, the, uh, the sign for cancer is the crab, right? Cancer is the crab. And so there's kind of that protective shell and so it seems that people could naturally be sort of moving into like pods or <laughs> doing the pod thing, um, moving into like becoming more, more insular in their communities, which again can be a negative thing or can be a positive thing, but returning to your community, returning to yourself. And it's a great time to really look at what is nourishing for you. Because again, looking at, this idea of scale that what happens here is also what happens there. If we're really tuning into our bodies and we're really tuning into what's nourishing and nourishing for us personally and, and getting like really being radical about what that is, then it's a lot easier to sort of promote that or sort of be able to um, utilize that knowledge that again, embodied knowledge. This is not knowledge that's coming up from here. Like Sagittarius is again, is a theory. Um, and theories are good, but theories are again, getting back to, like I said, the theories that I work with are ones that are grounded that are about how things really are, not how we want them to be. And so if we're talking about new theories that are going to support everybody, and new systems and structures that are going to support everybody, then everybody has to tune into what's actually supportive for them and what is nourishing for them and what is nurturing for them. So if everyone figures out what is nourishing and nurturing for them and begins to create their own structures for their lives about based on that, as opposed to based on what somebody else is telling them they should be doing, then the chances that they're also going to be a advocating for other people's nourishment are going to be a lot higher. And also that they're going to be advocating for systems that are actually supportive of them and what they need and what other people also need as opposed to oppressive. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I really think this season is about. I think that that ties nicely to uh, what you were talking about at the beginning, you know, first heal yourself and then this way you heal the world. And I think that's also a great, uh, uh, you know, action step for everyone who's watching that, uh, these episodes, like the, take care of yourself now, you know, in these times, take that care of good. yourself. And and that's that's the loving thing to do for yourself and for the people around you. And by extension, for the whole system. Yep. Everyone, ha this is really one 500 percent a time for everyone to do what they need to do to take care of themselves and the people in their immediate environment. Like everyone has to take care of themselves. Mm. and know what they need and that you know again allows people to then set better boundaries and have healthier relationships all of that but, but it is really number one 
I couldn't possibly emphasize enough for everyone to really hone in on what do I need right now? Okay. So I, I really like that we're bringing this to the personal level. So this, this most recent eclipse, the one that just happened on Friday, this is a great time to re-examine your beliefs. Look at your understanding of right and wrong. Look at, look at what you really believe about how the world is supposed to work, what you're still holding and carrying in that dimension. And because some of that stuff we got to let go of, if we want to move into a new situation, we have to let go of that. And then, so as we're letting go of that, thanks to, you know, in, in helped kind of giving a little bump forward by the little kick in the pants by the eclipse, then we're going to move into the lunar eclipse that you're, uh, the solar eclipse that you're talking about, which is in cancer, where we're going to have a chance to really hone in on personally, what nourishes me, what nourishes me, what's, what takes care of me and the immediate people around me in my home, kind of like a local small community style, what's going to take care of us. And then in that, and so, and when we find that thing, how can I really take care of me? Well, um, then we can extend that into the world more and we can participate yes. in building structures that are going to take care of everybody. And so then now mm -hmm. that brings us to the, the final eclipse in the season, you know, the one in on July 5th, the second lunar eclipse, uh, in, uh, Capricorn. And so how does that one translate on a personal level? Yeah, and maybe on maybe uh, if we can keep this answer short, just so that we stay on time, because we're already over time. Yeah, great. That one. What I'll say about that one is that you will have no option besides to care for yourself. Hmm. That's the message of that one. Oh, There's wow. no <laughs> nothing else is going to support you, but to, so it's a very you have to move intuitively because there will be no structures telling you how to move. Okay. That's the message. So it's going to be more. Oh. So if we just if we try to get our answers f from the external world, it's just going to be more and more confusing because the external world is starting to collapse and shift, and the experts are we're gone. The, and we're at the beginning of this. Okay. Like we have, there's a lot to come. A lot to come of we're at of the what? Of the chaos. Uh -huh. there, there's a lot more to. Come. We're at the begin. We are in a massive, massive reconfiguration of our entire social system as a global community and this is the beginning not the middle and not the end and so that's why it's really important for people to take care of themselves and to know what they need and to also i mean one of the great things about astrology again for someone like me who is very cerebral but um it has helped me to really move into being much more intuitive and we have to move in very intuitive ways and the ways that we have to move right now are counter to what I think most people and again it's going to be individual the time right now is if you're paying attention you, your intuition is going to tell you to do something different than what you have thought you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Great. It's really that kind of time. So this is so interesting. I mean, these are exactly the things I'm, yeah. I'm writing about right now. It, it's so weird. It's very validating to, you know, to hear, to hear this stuff. But so basically what you're saying is we better accept, accept the invitation of the solar eclipse in, uh, in, on June 21st to really dive into what really nourishes you and cares for you, because we have to come from, be in that place. If we want to be able to handle, uh, to step into our intuition and navigate when it's going to, you know, all the, all the typical signs of how we need to navigate are going away. So we really need to, to dig in to our own intuition and navigate from an internal place of care for ourselves. Yeah. And I yeah. think I the hurricane, I think the hurricane metaphor is actually really helpful um, because it is, you know, if you're, you're moving through a, you know, your town, your community, whatever, and there's a stop sign over here and you can see that and you know this building over here, but after a hurricane comes through, that all gets leveled. Mm -hmm. And so the only way that you know how and where to move is like, well, you can, you know that the sun rises in the east, you know, <laughs> you know, the sun sets in the west. You know, you, there's a completely different way of navigating. Um, so you have to pay attention in a different kind of way. And eclipse seasons, too, one of the things that they do is, and this is the last point that I'll make, but 
part of the, you know, you're cutting off light. So it can very much feel like um, you're in a cave and you've lost the light. And the only way that you can see around is to kind of feel. And you have to really move very slowly and feel against the wall, you know, and touch gently. This is not a kind of time. Like you have to kind of touch gently because like there could be a scorpion over there or whatever. You know, it's like you have to really move with your body very carefully, very intuitively and very softly in order to make it through to the other side. And I think very much what this time is about. That's that's a wonderful, uh, wonderful metaphor. Uh, Hilary, thank you. Uh, where can people find more about you, what you're working on and get in touch if, they, if they're interested in, in what you, you offer and they want to work with you? How can they do that, please? People can find me at my website, uh, drhillarybooker.com. People can find me and on there, there's also an astrology blog. There's a lot, there's a lot of information there. So I would say that's a great place to go. Um, two, I have on my social media, I'm on Facebook as Hillary Booker, but also um, I have a Facebook page, Hillary's House, which has a lot of this information as well as all of the other projects. Well, not all, but many of the other projects that I'm doing. Um, they can reach me at my via email at hillary at institute for earth based living .com. They can also contact me through my website. I'm also on Instagram at Hillary's House with one L, Hillary's House HH. And those are the best ways for people to reach me. Great. Yeah, we'll put some of those in the in the comments below the video. Great, uh, great awesome. stuff, Hillary. Thanks so much. And I, and I know that you know. Yeah, if, thank you. If, if people are, and we we kind of went through sort of general general advice about these uh this season and what might be happening but also you know if people work with someone like you directly they can also look on their own birth chart and see where these right. eclipses are falling in their chart to just see if that right. gives a clue to something more specific for them to look at as well so Absolutely. yeah so they can uh, uh, contact you to find that out oh, sorry go ahead yeah, I think we really want to use this as a time to, because this is a, these, this particular uh, eclipse season especially is an immense portal for really like huge change in your life. And so if people really want to use them to make really big change, I definitely recommend working with someone specifically because it will be very clear. Um, you know, it is a map. So you can see what what is going to be the easiest way to doing that based on how it how and where it falls in your chart. Great, great. Well, thanks so much. It's fascinating. I mean, uh, totally uh, awesome. new angle on astrology today. Really interesting discussion about social yeah. change, personal change, how those two things are interrelated. So thank you so much, Hillary, for being on the show. Thank you, Hillary. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure. <laughs> well, great. And I hope to talk to you again soon. All right, Arnie, we're going to do it. Yes. We're going to play the outro. You ready, everybody? Always. Thank you, everyone, for watching and see you next week or next time. See you soon, everybody. Uh, on Peak Relive. On Peak Relive. Mm -hmm.